Hey guys, my name is Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to attempt to repair an exhaust manifold. It comes off of, out of a 4.2 liter engine from a 1988 YJ. Uh, I'm going to try to do it with flux core. I've seen a lot of videos of people welding them online, so I'm going to attempt to do the same thing. I kind of see the process, you need to heat them up equally, things like that. So, anyway, let's get started. Alright guys, so here's what we're looking at. I've got a crack that runs somewhere right about here, runs all the way up to about this point. These are fairly large cracks, and then a crack through here and on this side, on this one arm over on this side. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to drill on either end to make a stop point so the crack can't go any further. Do the same thing over here. Take, remove some of this material in here to basically backfill with the weld material on both sides. And then once I get all that completed, I'll go back through, I'll heat the whole uh, unit up, the whole exhaust manifold up, and then I will uh, start to do the weld. I'll do a, a small little weld, and then I'll ping it with a, a small hammer, let it relax for a little bit, do another little weld, do another little weld, do that same process over and over again. carbide bit just wasn't getting the results I was looking for I don't think it was really meant for cast iron so switched over to the cutoff wheel that I had with it and I got a little bit better results to dig in there and open up that that crack a little bit more I was having difficulty seeing the crack as I was trying to clean it up so what I did is I put the wire brush on my drill next time I'll start off with this step so I can see it a lot better and it just makes this whole process a whole lot easier Point, I decided to start prepping the surface. I used 120, it's a new wheel, the 120 grit uh, flap disc. I figured that would be pretty good, but once I started working with it, I noticed, as you can see here, not many sparks were coming off. It just wasn't removing much material. It was just kind of you know, gumming up the actual sandpaper. So here I switched over to the quarter inch grind wheel and it worked a whole lot better. I was able to remove the material, prep the surface, so I was down to clean metal for well. About at this point is where I realized I'm not going to get the angle grinder in there. So I switched over to the stone on the Dremel, and that did a whole lot better, allowing me to clean up the material, the surface of the material, but I also was able to make a nice little groove down the crack on that one arm over there, you see, and I decided to take that and do it on the, the larger crack as well, just to give me a, a nice area to deposit the weld as I'm, you know, as I start the welding process. So I finished all the, the prepping of the crack. At this point, I want to start heating up the material. So I had two options. I could either take and put it on the grill and heat it up on the grill, or I could use this. This is my uh, weed kill weed burner. I use this on the patio a lot to kill weeds. You know, when I don't want to use Roundup, I just I can hit it real quick and you know burn the weeds off. It does a pretty good job. I've done brazing with this as well, which has also worked pretty good to preheat a larger piece of metal. And all I'm doing here is I'm just trying to heat it up fairly evenly and get the whole piece up so that. The, not one piece is trying to pull the suck the heat out of the center portion where I'm going to be welding. So I'm blowing it backwards through the exhaust manifold to try to get it to go out all of the uh, the ports on there. So this is what I'm really trying to do right here at this point. So now that we're about 500 degrees, I decide to start welding. I weld about an inch and then I do some peening on it to relax the metal, but it also clears off some of the slag and then I clear the residue off with a wire brush. And I just repeat this process all the way down the uh, weld.
about here is where I noticed there was some porosity, where there's, I'm guessing there's some carbon buildup that was in, inside the crack that kind of blew out and it opened up some voids. So all I'm doing here is going back over my previous weld, doing the exact same process, you know, weld a little bit, peen it, and then I just, that would cover up all the holes in it. So it was, basically it's a airtight seal at this point. So at this point, I'm going to take the exhaust manifold and I'm going to wrap him in this moving blanket. He's, he's warm, but he's not warm enough that I'm going to worry about it catching on fire, but it'll give him some kind of insulation so it'll slowly cool down. So. And I'm not, and more importantly, I'm not going to uh, leave it alone, but I'll leave it, I'll stay here with it for a little while. So here's the finished product. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is flux core, but I was able to go back through here. I did notice there was some porosity through here where basically, I believe it was some carbon buildup that was inside of the crack, uh, basically popped open and, and left a bunch of voids in the uh, weld. So we'll pass back over it with a second weld on top of it uh, just to cover up some of those spots. Uh, but overall, I do not see any cracks. I'd say it's about 120 degrees, 100 degrees, something like that. It's, it's, I can hold my hand on it. It's not that hot. Hey guys, so that wraps up the video for today. I want to cover preparation. I want to cover the actual welding of the part and how I did that and then the actual, and then the cool down of the part. I'm not going to go over the installation. I'll cover that in a future video where I'm doing the carb rebuild because it, I'll need to put the whole thing together at once anyway. So for now, this is really all I want to cover. The welds seem to be holding. From what I can tell, it's been 56 degrees right now, so it's cooled off fairly quickly. Uh, this is probably the most aggressive cool down it will have. Once it's attached to the engine block, it'll be a little bit slower to cool down and warm up because there's a big hunk of steel that's attached to it. So that's really all I wanted to show in this video. So if you found this video useful or you found something amusing about it, great. Uh, give me a like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep getting these videos. All right, have a good one.